accounting work, um, in Stanbridge's theorem, so in the standard TSPP case, uh, we were just interested in the number of such plane partitions. And here, I listed all totally symmetric plane partitions that fit into a cube of length two, so n equals two, and you can easily verify that this formula for n equal two, we have i, j, k, like we can put one, 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 we can one, one, two, one, two, two, and two, 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 and then we get here two over one times three over two times four over three times five over four. So everything cancels away except the five, and we get that there are five totally symmetric plane partitions, uh, which fit into a cube of length n, uh, two. Mm, now, we are going to, going to refine this statement. Uh, so we are now not only interested in the number of such plane partitions, but also how many orbits do they have. And for this, we introduce the, not uh, um, the notation, um, an extra symbol Q, that encodes the number of orbits. So let me demonstrate it uh, with these pictures here. So in the first picture, this is the empty plane partition. And obviously, we do not have any orbit, because there are no cubes at all. So we have zero orbits, and we encode this as q to the zero. Huh? Then in the next case, we have clearly we have one orbit, and we encode this as q to the one. The next example, we have this orbit, and we have these three cubes form an orbit. So we have q squared, and so on. Here we have one, two, three orbits gives us a q to the three, and we have one, two, three, four orbits, q to the four, and we sum this up, and this polynomial um, is the, the q analog of the counting function. Um, because here, if we put q equal one, we get five. So we get our original information, but here with this having a polynomial like that, we have more information. We get the number of plane partitions, of totally symmetric plane partitions, plus the number of orbits. And again, you can see, so this is the q equals one case, the standard case, this is the q case. Um, the two, for, two formulas are really very similar. Um, and you can see again here we have, if we plug in n equals two, we get here one minus q squared over one minus q and then we get one minus q cubed divided by one minus q squared, and again, everything cancels out, and in the end we get one minus q to the five divided by one minus q, and we get this polynomial. All right. So this is how it works. And so this notation is just like what I explained. So we have, we consider the action of the symmetric group S3 on, on this, uh, Oh, on this main partitions. Okay, question so far. This is just a combinatorial background. And um, now I have to talk about this parallel universe that uh, comes up when we deal with this Q. So for those who have not heard about that, that you do not wonder about the notation that will come later. So I mean, everybody is familiar with natural numbers. and here is the Q analog of the natural number. So any, basically any concept in combinatorics has its Q analog. So whether we are talking about numbers or factorials or binomial coefficients, everything has a Q analog or even several Q analogs. And this is the Q analog for the natural number N. So we denote it by N sub Q. And this is the definition. Uh, if you expand it, you get this. And it's clear if you plug in q equals 1, you get n. And this is the property of, of these q analogs. So if you plug in q equals 1, you usually obtain the standard thing which it corresponds to. <coughs> OK, the next q analog is the factorial, denoted by this, and defined like in the standard case. But we, instead of numbers, we use these q brackets. And again, we have the property, if we plug in q equals 1, we just obtain n factorial. And the same works for the binomial coefficient. You can see it's defined in the very same way as in the standard case. 
the q binomial coefficient, or if you write it more explicitly, you get this rational function, which actually cancels in a way that you get a polynomial. And again, we have the property for q equals 1, we get the standard binomial coefficient. So just that you are not afraid of this notation, which will pop up in a minute. So there's nothing special behind it. Um, so from now on we can basically, unfortunately, forget about all these nice pictures because we will now do a reformulation of the problem that allows us to attack it, but then somehow forgets about all these pictures. So this guy, Soichi Okada, has proven the following theorem, namely that the QTSPP conjecture that we want to prove is true if this determinant evaluation holds. So we define this uh, function aij, the matrix entries, and aij is to defined to be this expression, and you see here this q binomial, co uh, yeah, q binomial coefficient pops up here, and some other q's, and this is the Kronecker delta function. So these are the matrix entries, and we consider the matrix with uh, dimension n, and the conjecture is that the uh, determinant of this matrix evaluates to this nice formula. And observe that this is just the square of the counting function for the total symmetric bank partitions. So let me denote this determinant with the symbol B n, E sub n. Um, yeah, and again, the nice thing is if we plug in Q equals 1, then these binomial, Q binomial coefficients turn into a standard binomial coefficients. This Q goes away, also this goes away, and this gives a 2, I guess. Um, and if you take the determinant of the matrix without Q, then it turns just numbers as entries, um, we get the corresponding formula for the, for the standard counting case. And this was also the trick that Stanbridge used in 95 to prove the, give the first proof of the TSPP statement. Um, yeah, and during the work that we did on the QTSPP conjecture, we realized that all the computations that we had to perform turned out to be very complicated. So we started with the Q equals one case to reprove the statement um, to get a feeling of how the methods work, how how far we can go, and so as a case study, so to speak. So we in the frame of this work, we provided a computer proof of the TSPP statement again. Now, uh, we do a second reformulation of the problem that was proposed by Doron Seilberger, and that's why he's also mentioned as a collaborator here. And this is the following. So we do some magic, we play magician, we pull out of the head some discrete function, and we call it C and J. And then we have these three identities, 